Today, I wanna to take you through from start to finish how I captured and edited this particular image. This is a single tracked sky exposure blended with a multiple light painted foreground subject. Hello, as always, it's great to see you all here on the channel. And if you've not seen my videos before, I love to shoot the night sky and landscape. I make use of long exposure photography techniques to capture the beauty of the night sky. And I often use light painting to give extra beauty to the foreground subject matter. So stay tuned because I'm going to run through the whole editing process of this shot in a minute. Now, I found myself out on a beautiful clear and cold night recently with the intention of capturing the rising Milky Way galactic core over a tree. Now, I'd scouted this location a while ago and knew that they'd line up perfectly for what I had in mind. So when I arrived on site, the first thing I did was set up my Ioptron Skyguider Pro just behind the car on the side of the road with the intention of shooting the sky exposures first. Now, I usually do this because you just don't know what the weather may bring later on in the night. So if I can get the sky shot in the bag first, then it's not so important if a few clouds appear when I'm going to be shooting the foreground parts of the image. Now, just in case you're wondering, yes, I shot the tracked sky on the side of the road, just behind the car, and then moved over into the paddock to shoot the tree. I did this so that I'd have a clear, uninterrupted view of the Milky Way in the sky. Now, this makes the blending of these two elements later a lot easier to achieve. So I'm using the same equipment on the same night, but the shooting locations for foreground and background are about 20 meters apart. Now, sometimes I'll shoot uh, multiple track shots of the Milky Way and stack those for a cleaner noise free image. But on this occasion, I decided to just shoot one frame for the sky. But what I did do was enable long exposure noise reduction in camera for that shot. So my two minute exposure actually took four minutes to shoot in the field. I did this because it often helps obtain a very clean image straight out of camera. The Nikon Z6 camera is very clean anyway, but I knew it would help. And by the way, I was using my Hydrogen Alpha modified Nikon Z6 with the 20 millimeter F 1.8 lens. And this was mounted, as I said, on my tracker, the iOptron Skyguider Pro, which I use all the time. And I set the aperture to F 2.8, 120 second shutter speed and ISO 800. I'd already worked out that my image would best suit in portrait orientation because I wanted to capture as much of the Milky Way as possible. And from there, I made my way over to the tree. Now, I knew that I was going to be using the Photoshop sky replacement feature to actually put my tracked shot into the foreground. So I took one image of the tree with the Milky Way clearly visible in the shot. You see, the software needs this ambient exposure to actually replace the sky. So I shot this at f2.8, 20 second shutter speed at ISO 3200 with no light painting at all. From there, I proceeded to take about four or five light painted shots of the tree and the foreground. Now I know I'm probably not gonna use all of these, but I've got them in the bag anyway. For these, I stopped down the aperture to f5 with a shutter speed of 15 seconds and ISO of 800. Now, to be honest, these settings can be varied quite a bit, but I do like to stop down the aperture and lower the ISO because this gives me a very clean and sharp image. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through exactly how I edited all of this into the final image. Let's go. So the recording here basically is in two parts. Firstly, I'm gonna be working on the sky, the tracked sky image. And secondly, I'm working on the foreground light painted images. And then at the end, I'll be blending those together. So let's get started. This image we're looking at now is my single tracked sky shot. 
Uh, here you can see the exposure, f2.8. It says 132 seconds. Well, it could be about right. It's supposed to be two minutes, but maybe I just can't count. And ISO 800. Adjustments, I've hardly done anything. I plus 10 there. I've added some extra noise reduction down here, plus 20 in luminance, plus 20 in contrast. I've also enabled uh, remove chromatic aberration. The lens correction is already built into that 20 millimeter Nikon lens. Uh, and there you have it. So what I'm going to do is right click on that image. I'm going to edit in, edit in Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop and you can see my layer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, duplicate the layer. So we'll add another one, duplicate. The reason I do this is just so I've got a reference for my original image so I can compare the two. And there we have, we're working on that copy at the moment. I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and just slightly increase the whole thing. I'm just going to push that curve up a little bit, just a bit like that. Uh, that's about all I need to do. And I'm going to go to layer, merge visible. What that does is it merges all of that into that one layer again. Remember, I've still got this hidden original layer down the bottom here, and you can see the difference. All I've done is just slightly increased it, hardly anything. What I'm going to do now is go up to filter, and I'm going to, get to go down to a plugin called Star Exterminator. That's from RC Astro. Now I've showed you this before, so I won't go into any detail on that, but I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to click OK. Now what this is going to do is create a starless layer. I'm actually going to be removing the stars from the image. And you might ask, why am I doing that? Well, the reason I'm doing that is to work on the stars separately to the nebulosity of the Milky Way. And I like to do that because it's a better way of actually increasing that nebulosity without increasing the noise level. Now I've done a lot of star reduction before using other methods and I've found this is also a great way to apply a level of star reduction that I think helps a lot without adding that terrible artifacts that you often get when doing star reduction. Anyway, let's wait and see uh, how this comes out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It takes the stars out and it's as simple as that. Have a look at that. What I'm going to do is rename that to Starless, just so I can keep tabs of what's going on here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go back to that bottom layer and duplicate that layer, duplicate, and call this one Stars Only. Because I, I've got a Starless layer, but I still need a Star layer. So I'm going to click on that one, go up to Image, Apply Image, click on the one that says Starless, and then in my blending mode here, uh, make it subtract, leave the default settings and click OK. And now what we have achieved is we have our stars on their own, as you can see here. Zoom in a little bit, you can see they're just the stars. Fascinating, isn't it? All right, so now we have a starless layer and a star layer. And that's what I want. So first things first, let's go to this starless layer and just do a few tweaks on that. Now this is not going to be a complex edit. I want to keep it as simple as possible, but I'm going to go into my curves and apply a gentle S curve, just a really gentle one, just to bring up a bit more of that uh, contrast. You can see already what that has done. I haven't done very much at all, to be absolutely honest with you. Just added that little bit there, just like that. Now, another thing that you could do, I'll just go back to that curve. Another thing I could do is have a look at the color balance in here. So, for example, I could go to my red channel and I could just drop that a fraction down here in the bottom. You can see what I've done there. So it brings a bit more blue into it. Uh, I could uh, go to the green channel and perhaps increase the green just fractionally and the blue channel and do the same. Something like that. Now, that's not a whole lot different, but it is taking a lot of that magenta out, which the magenta is added when the modified camera, the Astro modded camera has a lot of extra red. That's the whole point of having the Astro mod, but I don't like it around these perimeter or peripheral parts of the image where I prefer that to maintain some of the color that was there before. Anyway, I'm liking that. I might just tweak that original RGB curve, just that fraction more, just to give a little bit more extra oomph into this image, something like that. Okay, 
pretty good. Now I'm going to merge visible layer, merge visible. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go up to filter, camera raw filter. And what this is going to do, I'm going to add a bit more oomph into this sky. Okay, so in here I can adjust uh, normal parameters like temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, and all of those things. First thing, I'm going to go down to the dehaze tab and increase that a fair bit. And you see what that's done? That's really given it, that's about plus 32. It's given it a nice amount of contrast. I'm going to increase the exposure a fraction and also the contrast. Now, I think I might go down to the detail tab and add some noise reduction here, a fair bit. Now that's going to soften the image slightly, but don't worry too much about that because when I add the stars back in, it will give it more sharpness, I think. Let's go back to the basic tab. So I can play with this if I, if I feel it needs to be played with in, in some shape or... I don't know. I don't know if I need to do very much at all to that because I, I actually like it the way it is. You know, these, these settings are something that you can play with to your heart's content, but I'm pretty happy with that just as it is. So uh, that image to this image so far... I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and have a look at closer. And you can see a few artifacts. You can see through here. Now, what those artifacts actually are, are where the stars came from. So you can see them there, all those little dots. So what I'm going to do here, without doing too much more to this image, is I'm going to just put the stars back in. I could do a lot more. Now, I'm sure you could go through the curves adjustment. You can go through the, the a, a number of other settings here, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep this simple. So what I'm going to do is enable the stars layer. In fact, I'm going to duplicate the stars layer. So I'm going to go to layer, duplicate, and that stars copy. So we'll just turn one of those off. Now what I'm going to do with this star layer here is apply a blend mode of color dodge. Now you, can, you can do it with a number of these screen. You could do it with lighten. I'm going to do color dodge. And you can see immediately what I've achieved by doing this is I have done star reduction, a lot of star reduction. Now, let's just go back to my original layer and have a look at this. This is what it originally looked like, and now it looks like this. So I've done, by just doing what I just did then, achieved a fair bit. Now I'm gonna actually enable this second stars layer, which is exactly the same, but I'm going to go down and add, I'll do color dodge again. So now I've got two layers and I've actually added some more stars in and that's what I wanted. I don't want it to be completely starless because a completely starless image looks like that, but I don't like that. It's got a, a fair few artifacts and I'll just go in and have a look again. You can see now all of those artifacts are gone because I've actually replaced them with stars, which is what came from those spots in the first place. Now you can play as much with this as you like as far as how much you put these stars back in. But I'm just showing you some of the things that I do. And this is one of the big advantages of using RC Astro software to give us a starless image because it gives us this beautiful uh, representation of stars. But that Milky Way galactic core just shines out so beautifully. All right, what I'm going to do now is uh, merge that visible. So we've just done that. Now you can compare before and after. So that's before, that's after. Before, after. Isn't that incredible? So now I'm going to go to a flatten image and that's going to ask me if I want to discard the hidden layer, which is my original. I say, yes, I certainly do. And I'm going to go back. So click out of Photoshop, say yes to this, exit Photoshop. And this is going to save this image back into Lightroom. So back in Lightroom, here's our image. Now I could add a little bit more here. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to brighten this up a fraction and add a little bit more dehaze. Just to see how it really punches the image. A little bit more contrast. This is very similar to what we did back in Photoshop earlier. As I said, you can play with this to your heart's content. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. That is very, very nice. To me, it's not overly processed. It doesn't look over done it looks just nice all right so what i'm going to do now is save that image export out of lightroom as a tiff file so i need to find somewhere to put this uh, i have a tracked sky folder so i'm going to put it in there just so i can remember where everything is it's going to be a tiff file okay and click export and away we go
All right, so we've done that. Now we go back to our images here. Now what I'm going to be doing now is adding in my light painted images. But before I do that, I want to go to this one image and you can see this one here. This is my what I noted before as my ambient sky. This is the image that I'm going to be using for the sky replacement. So as you can see, we have uh, a few settings I've altered here, only marginally added a bit more whites a bit of exposure hardly anything really and i've done some noise reduction you can see a plus 36 there it doesn't really matter because all of these stars are going to be replaced so i've made sure the profile corrections are exactly the same as all the others and so that one's ready to go now let's just keep our eye on where that one is i've got a number of images here which are light painted images so you can see them here and remember, these are shot at f5, 15 seconds at ISO 800. So the stars are less visible. And that's deliberate because I don't want the stars to be in these shots. These are simply the foreground light painted. So you can see there's quite a number of them here. I'm not going to be using all of these, but I'll show you what I took just so that you know what is in my mind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on all of these. So I'm holding down control so I can select these ones. And there we are. We've got about six images selected there. I doubt I'm going to use them all, but we'll see what happens. Right click on any one of those, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So you can see now we've got all of our images in as layers in Photoshop. And what we're seeing is the, the background sky is at the top and all the light painted images are underneath. So I'm going to drag that sky down to the bottom like so. And now I'm going to select all of those light painted layers by holding down shift on the keyboard and clicking, change my blend mode from normal to lighten. And now you get a rough idea of what we're looking at. But I don't think I need all of these layers. That's my thought. And I'm looking now, yeah, there's definitely some of these layers that are more beneficial than others. In fact, just looking at this, I reckon there's only two layers that I'm going to be using here. So just for the moment, I'm going to look at these, these two layers and I'll see if I need anything else in a minute. So I'm going to turn off all the layers except the top one. And the purpose of this is I'm going to rub out the sky of that layer. But the problem is without that bottom layer selected, it's a bit hard to see where the sky is. So I have to select that bottom layer, but then I can't see what I'm rubbing out as well on that layer. So what I'll do here is I'll change the opacity of that bottom layer down to about 50%. And now I'm going to click on that top layer and add a layer mask. Little square down the bottom is a layer mask. And that means I can rub out or uh, add in whatever bits I want. So I'll go over here onto the left of the screen. You can see I've selected the brush tool and I'm going to get to the top here. Make sure the opacity is at 100%. Everything's 100%. Uh, I select a hard brush and a fairly large one, as you can see. And I'm now rubbing out the sky. Remember, this is a hard brush. It's not a soft brush. And I'm going to get in as close as I can. To do that, I'm going to zoom in on the image and make my brush smaller. Something like this. And you can see I can get right in close there to rub out these stars. So I want you to keep in mind that this doesn't have to be exact. And you can see it's not being exact at all. One of the reasons I'm talking about that is because what we're seeing here is essentially uh, a lot of the stars from that bottom layer. Remember, that's still on a 50% opacity. So if I turn that off completely, for example, like that, you can see there's hardly any stars showing through. So this is why I'm not being too fussy about this. I'm just wanting to get the brighter stars there. And I'm just going to rub all of these out. So I might just fast forward through this to save time. Okay, now you can see my very, very rough job of rubbing out this guy. Well, let me show you what happens. I will click on that bottom layer, select the opacity back to 100. And suddenly, oh, gee, that looks pretty good. Now, I want you to remember, this is not the sky we're going to be using. This is just my test shot. Really, that's just my ambient sky exposure. We're going to be doing a sky replacement and putting my other sky in in a minute. But in the meantime, let's just select that second layer down. And I need to rub out those stars in that one. So I'll just copy that mask I created by holding down Alt on the keyboard 
and dragging it down to that layer. And now we have both of those layers that I've decided to use with the sky rubbed out. Now, I wanna get rid of this. This is me with the torch shining onto the tree. So what I'm going to do there is click on that layer mask, zoom in on the image a little bit, so, just so I can work a bit better on this, and grab a soft brush this time. Not a hard brush, a soft brush. A little bit bigger and just get down there and you can see I'm rubbing out the bits I don't want. I'm being a little bit more careful down here because this will show up in my final image. So I have to be a bit, obviously have to be a bit careful. Now, what you're immediately noticing here is I'm not rubbing that piece out. And the reason for that is because that's obviously on the top layer. So let's go to the top layer and there we go. We can rub that one out. This is one of the interesting things. When you're working on foreground layers and you've got multiple layers like we have here, you will often find that that there are bits, uh, you think, oh, which layer is that on? And you have to sometimes just stop and start and click the layers on and off to actually notice what is being affected. Now, let me just go back and have a look before we move on with these other layers that I haven't used at this point in time. Do I need any of that? Yeah, I don't, definitely don't need that. I like that darkness on that other side of the tree. And the same with that. I really don't see any point in that layer. That is not needed at all. This one, I reckon, you know what? I'm going to include that and just um, do a little bit of modification to it. Yes, indeed. So I'll get my soft brush once again and a fairly large one on this one. I'm going to rub out on the tree there because I like that bit that was there. And I think I might just rub out some over here if there was anything spilled. Uh, Look, it's not adding too much to the image. And, you know, to be honest, it might not be even necessary, but I'll leave it in just because there might be something in this foreground that I like. Just a touch of detail in this close foreground. All right, that's not too bad. Don't mind that at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, well, firstly, these two layers I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna get rid of those, I don't want them. So I'm gonna select these three images and I'm going to create a group. To create a group I select them and drag them down to this little square down here which says group. It's created a group. Now one thing to be careful of when you create a group in Photoshop it changes the blend mode to pass through. I don't know why it does that but I want that to be lightened as we had originally. All right so now we have our light painted images here in this group, which by the way are still accessible by clicking on this little arrow and you can see they're still there. I've only put them in a group so I can manage them better. I can see what I'm doing. And now it comes to the fun part. I'm going to do a sky replacement. So I'll uh, uncheck the light painted foreground because I just want to replace this sky. So to do that, I go up to edit, sky replacement and click on that. And what it will do is it will load up the last sky that I used. Now, in this case, it will be the one that I want to use because that is the last thing I was working on just before recording this video. Okay, so you can see here what's happened. It's brought that sky in. It's done a fantastic job of actually lining that exactly where it needs to be. Uh, and you can see the parameters here for the sky replacement box here. Now, you can change a few things here if you want. You can make it a little bit. Uh, more yellow a little bit, which I think I will. It's got a lot of blue in it, so I'm gonna take it over here a little bit. And you can also do some fine tuning, which I will be doing before I enable the okay. If I press okay down the bottom here, then that will just go through. But what I often do will do is zoom in on the image by clicking these little parameters here. Little magnifying glass, zoom in, and I'll just click there, and it, whoops, and it will take me in to the image. So I can see what it looks like around the edges of this tree. Boy, that looks good. This software is absolutely amazing, you know. It does such a good job. Look at that. That is as clean as a whistle. So oftentimes you'll find stars coming through the blackness there. And by the way, one of the reasons I left the light painted layers off was so I could see this better. So on the black, I can see that, for example, there. Now, if I go into this tool here, which is a brush tool and click on minus up here, and I go, oh, well, that's actually not coming off. So it doesn't appear to be a problem. Uh, I can make that a little bit bigger. This is an overlay blend mode. 
and I can just go down the bottom here and click up. But it, look, it appears to be absolutely sensational. I can't see anything here that really needs any work at all. So this is one example of this sky replacement program that has just done a magnificent job without needing pretty much any work at all. If it did need some work, I could just go around and uh, particularly on edges. Now this is an easy image. Some images are not this easy, but nevertheless, it works really, really well. So I'm going to just going to fill the frame again, fill screen. And there we have it. I'm going to press OK. And there we have, you can see all of these layers that have been introduced uh, by that sky replacement. Isn't it good? It is just so, so good. Now what I'm going to do is unlock my group. So we can now see the light painted tree in the foreground. It, isn't that just beautiful? Now, one thing I want to um, let you know is you can still do adjustments to elements. I could still do some adjustment onto these layers in here if I wanted to. I can turn them on and off like so if I wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with those. I'm going to leave them as is. I could still do an adjustment to this sky if I wanted to as well, but I don't think I do. I, I, I think I like it just the way it is. Remember, I said this was meant to be a simple image and I've tried to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So I am going to flatten this image. I think before I do that, I'll just zoom in a little bit and make sure it looks good around that tree, which it does. Have a look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? All right, so I'm going to go up to here to layer, flatten image, discard hidden layers. If there's any, yes, I will. And now I'm going to exit Photoshop. Click yes on that. And this will take me back to Lightroom. Here's our image back in Lightroom. I'll just put that onto full screen so we can have a look and see what it looks like. All right, maybe a couple of adjustments here. Not much required, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more temperature into this, just a touch. It doesn't need much. Drop the highlights a fraction and increase the dehaze just a little tiny bit more. Yeah, yeah, just a bit. It doesn't need much. And you know, everyone has their, their thoughts about these adjustments, but I love it. I think that image looks fantastic. And there we have it. There is our tracked sky, a single exposure. And uh, we've only ended up using two or well, three layers, two and a half, to be honest. Not much more than that. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm really happy with this image. And I think my editing and blending method is both simple and straightforward. Well, as straightforward as any astro landscape shot can be. Anyway, I'm always happy to chat further with you guys down in the comments section below. And as always, I'll be looking forward to catching you in the next video. So I'll see you then.